All right, so we finished our black vector. So we have our refined sketch. We have posted our black vector shape. To do that, we brought it into Photo P. We keep it as a smart object. We put it onto an 8x10 Photo P file that's 350 pixels per inch. I can check that on image size. And because our SVG vector is brought in, dragged and dropped in as a smart object, it's going to always render to the best possible resolution of whatever pixel space we put it in. Now, this is already formatted for printing, but it is not what's called print ready. Print ready means that it is a flattened file at the highest possible quality at a lossless compression, which we use TIFF for. So I'm going to show you how we can save this. I've already saved it as a PSD. It's right here. In PhotoP, we're going to make this our print ready file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say layer, flatten the image. This is just for the print ready file. Then I'm going to say file, export as more, <laughs> it's a little complicated, TIFF. So TIFF is what's called an archive format. It goes into downloads as a TIFF. It can be TIF or TIFF. It's a TIFF format. I'm going to mark it purple. And I'm going to change the name. I'm just going to change it by putting capital P and R and a dash in front of it. That means it's print ready. This is my print ready TIFF. If I view it at full resolution, actual size, you can see how clean it looks, right? All right. Then I'm going to go to the class. I'm going to go to the home page. I'm going to look at links, which I'm not going to do on this public YouTube, right? And in the links, here I'll pause it before I do it. In the links, it's going to have a link to our class Dropbox. That's where you put your print ready files. You have a folder waiting for you there. So I'm just going to pause it first. All right. So I told you, you can go to your links page and then click on Dropbox and it will show you on the link bags how to log into the Dropbox. Once you're in it, scroll down to digital art class files and then scroll down to flatten TIFF files to print. So it reminds you that in order to print, they need to be TIFFs and they need to be flattened. Then in the flattened TIFF files to print, you find your folder. Because you guys are my afternoon class, you're going to be SP242, right? So I have my own folder for this class section. I open that up. This is where I'm going to put, I already have too much stuff in there, but that's where I'm going to put stuff for printing. So I'll go to my morning one because I don't think I have anything in there. So if it's empty, which it is, then you simply drag and drop your flattened print ready TIFF files into there. Your first one is going to be your logo. Now maybe you don't want to print your black logo. You required to print a vector logo. So your other option is to print a color version of this. How do you do a color version of that? We go to photo P and close it out because that was my flattened TIFF. Open up your Photoshop, your PSD version of it, which has it as a smart object on a white background, right? Turn on the white background, make a duplicate command J of your smart object because this will be your black logo and on top of it will be your color logo all just outputted from the same vector smart object. Then how do you color it? It couldn't be simpler. You're just going to double click on the layer to open layer styles. And then you're going to play with all of these different options. The easiest being color overlay. Click on color overlay, check it. Normal, opacity 100%. I don't want it to be a black logo. I want it to be, my favorite color is saffron yellow. So maybe like this color. That's a color logo. Is it exciting? No, right? But that's 
a color logo. That would meet the requirements. What if I want to add a little bit more? Well, let's take the opacity of that saffron down because I like it, but I only want it at 50%. And right now, what's underneath it, it's the black that my vector is. But I'm going to now add a gradient to it. And so the gradient underneath it, I'm going to keep it 100%. And right now, it's just a black to white. That's the standard gradient at a 90 degree angle. I can play with the scale of that. I can angle it differently. I kind of like that because this is um, like, like about a snake taking flight, right? So I want it to be a little bit heavier at the bottom and lighter at the top. But here's what's beautiful about gradients. You just click on the gradient and you can totally change these. So I can add colors into my gradient. I can replace the black with like a brown, like a reddish brown. I can move the white more to the center. I can add a darker yellow at the top. So you can make your own custom gradient. You can change the angle of it. This is very much how you would do like a gold effect, like a gold metallic effect. And you can play with the scale. Kind of like that angle, right? And now I can play with that color overlay over the top of it and kind of see what that's adding in. Those are just, that's just color and gradient. And I can even play with blending modes on top, right? Just do all kinds of different things until I get the color version I like. Now let's get beyond the color. What if I want to drop shadow? All those optional effects we did on exercise two, you can do to your logo for your color version. So in the drop shadow, I'm going to play with its opacity. I'm going to play with its angle. I'm not going to use the same angle that I used for the gradient. So I'm going to uncheck global angle. I want it to look kind of like cut out paper. I'm going to play with its size, which will soften it and shorten its distance. I don't want to make it too subtle, you know. And I have the white turned on just so I can see what it would look like on white as a default. But if I'm being extra careful, what I would do is duplicate the background twice and I would fill the top background with black because a logo has to be clear, engaging, and versatile. What's more versatile than a logo that can be printed on any background, right? So by filling one background with black, you can see how it looks on white, see how it looks on black, and then the middle background you fill with middle gray. Because if it can look good on black, white, and gray, it's going to work on any background. Think of it like any t-shirt. Right? So I don't really like how it looks on black. It's a little too solid, right? So maybe I can play with some more of these layer styles, double clicking on it. And maybe I want to put a stroke around it. Remember, we turned off all strokes as a vector, but we can add them back in when we color within layer styles. I'm going to position that stroke on the inside, which is something you can't do with vectors. In vectors, the stroke is always centered, or the outline is always centered. And I'm going to make that stroke white to help it show up on this black background, right? And then maybe I want to give it a satin pass. And satin will do kind of a, a gradient that darkens. It's set to multiply, but I can play with it op its opacity. So it doesn't look so garishly bright on the black. Then I say okay, and then let's see what that looks like on gray. Yeah, it still looks pretty good on gray. Let's see how that looks on white. Looks okay on white, right? But maybe a little bit too thin. 
So if it looks too thin, what can I do? Let's go to effects again, and now I'm going to play with outer glow. And instead of making it glow bright like it would on a black background, if I do outer glow, and make it big enough so you can see, right? That's what glow does. I can change the glow to a normal mode. And that way, it will also show up on a white background. Come on, catch up with me. That helps the white to show up. But maybe that's not exactly what I want. So you keep working with it. So maybe I don't want Outer Glow to be this yellow color. That's the default. Maybe I want it to be darker which won't really make a difference on black, but will make a big difference when it's on things that are lighter than black. So it's a way of doing kind of an even drop shadow that glows all the way behind everything. And you can play with its spread, you can play with its size. I'm gonna shrink its size a little bit. And now see how that works on white. And if it's too dark, I just play with its opacity. I kind of like that. Maybe I want to thin out the stroke. So you have full control of all of these, and they do not hurt your vector. They are just derived from your vector. They're coded to the vector under this effects tab. The only time you need to rasterize to color is if you want to take a chunk of yours, like the wings, and just treat them differently than the rest of the logo. You know how Pepsi has blue and red, right? So if I wanted to separate the wings and make them a different color, I just duplicate them onto their own, and then I can change the effects just for them. But for instance, change the color overlay to be a very different color. And then the only other instance where you might rasterize or use a rasterized element, even though it comes from your vector, is if you want to fill in some of the empty space in your color. So what if I want this to have a red eye? So I can't really copy it because it's empty space. So what I'm going to do is just create a new layer. Selected. I can select the, that empty space with the magic wand and contiguous. Right, right. Oh, I'm in the wrong vector. Deselect. I was on the wing layer. Come on. So I need to be on my, my logo. Select within that empty space I want to fill put that selection onto a new layer, and then I can just edit, fill it with, I'll just do gray for now, right? Now that it's filled with gray, it could be filled with anything, then I can apply layer styles to that. So I can do a colored eye, I can do a gradient, I can change that gradient, <coughs> maybe make that dark like a deep red, That doesn't really look that good. I can change it from, from linear to radial. That's kind of trippy. I can reverse it. <laughs> so something like that, right? Now, even though these two layers are rasterized, I'll mark them as orange. They are still derived perfectly from the vector at resolution. So they're still nice and clean. So this is my color logo. How do I save it? How do I put it to canvas? I want it to look good on black. I want it to look good on gray. I want it to look good on white. If I think it does, then I'm good to go. I'm actually not sold on the eye. So maybe I'll simplify it. I'm just gonna take out that gradient. And you do that just by double clicking. It opens it. I just turn off the gradient. Or let's just make a really simple gradient. 
If you click on the drop-down menu, you'll get to some simple ones.